Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakudash, the Bawana to the Apostles and the Elder Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there, doing his work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. All right, now I just want to go into a uh, quick topic uh, based upon <clears throat> Joel, uh, the second chapter, I believe up to like verse, verse like 10 or 11. All right, and um, our Lord willing, this uh, segment is edifying. <clears throat> and it's um, Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong they have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. So, you know, the, <clears throat> the day of the clouds and the thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, you have to think about what that could possibly be. You know, when you look at it, what other things spread upon mountains and, and things like that? People will maybe, maybe the sun. Yeah, if the sun ain't, ain't don't bring those clouds in that darkness. What is ultimately going to bring those clouds in that darkness? The destruction of America by way of those thermonuclear missiles. As I said, what a great people and a strong there have not been ever the like. Neither shall there shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations and that gives us you know what context clues all right that gives us context clues so when we go clearly to uh, Isaiah Isaiah 2 and 1 um, yeah I'm gonna get straight to the uh, I'll read though I saw Isaiah 2 and 1 the word that Isaiah the son of Amos so concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So that clearly gives us what the, the context that after this earth as we presently know it, <clears throat> um, is done that what there's not going to be any more destruction. There's not going to be anything more like, you know, uh, the sort of guns or uh, uh, missiles and, and, and different things like that. Um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Uh, we was, okay, yeah, it was in Joel. I was lucky. <clears throat> so that clearly gives you the, the context for that. And then what it said, uh, a great people and a strong, they have not been ever the like. You know, it's just like with anything else, man. And that's why you have to be for one. We know, you know, that uh, have to be spiritual. Lord, have to open up our eyes, you know. But for two, the, the scriptures always give context clues. You know, they clearly give context clues that people don't pay attention to. And that's something basic that you're learning in school. You know, I just saw uh, Revelations uh, nine and um. In uh, verse 6, and it says, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of woman, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. That's going back into, um, you know, uh, 
<clears throat> the world war and breaking down um you know the uh the planes you know how they looked at it as locust world war one how they looked as locust and uh the way that that the hair uh was over the helmets you know of, of the soldiers all right and um going into verse nine now it says <clears throat> now getting straight to the nukes says um and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sounds of their wings was as the sound of the chariots of many horses run to battle. Oh, Salakia, that's all still um, talking about um, uh, the World War One, But uh, Salakia, <clears throat> yeah, I meant to go down to... Um, Yeah, I'm start at uh, verse, I start at verse 15, it says, And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day, in a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen, <coughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, um, <coughs> lost, uh, <coughs> what was we at? Uh, yeah, this um, Revelation is 9 <clears throat> and uh, 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. <clears throat> so this is referring to what? The nukes, all right? And thus I saw the horses... In the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jasper and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke and brimstone. This, and it's describing the the uh, <coughs> the missiles, you know, as they carried uh, up into the air, you know, the the different parts of them, the different metals that they have about them before. They reach up into the air and uh, coming down to drop the um, the nuclear warhead. Okay. By these were the third was the third part of men killed by the fire, and by the smoke and by the brimstone was issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. So those heads are the the what. The, the warheads that I just mentioned coming out of the silos, all right? And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. All right, so let's go back to <clears throat> let's go back to Joel now. All right, all right. So this is uh, Joel two and three. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. So that's how it was talking about what that power was in that mouth and in their tails. In Revelations, uh, the ninth chapter. So this is giving you what another context clue. A fire devoured before them. So when it's going up and and the uh, flame burneth behind them, you know, coming out of the tail when it's going up into the air, and the land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them, because nothing is going to escape the path of the thermonuclear destruction when it hits. Okay, that's why you see all different type of movies. Uh, you know about nuclear destruction and different things like that because they know it's going to tear up the world and you know they have the movie i believe it's what's the actor name uh george clooney I mean, if i'm not mistaken the movie uh arrow itself okay which is another prime example all right so um what was we at uh verse four the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horses horsemen so shall they run just going like into Revelation 9, all these context clues, you know, because we know what, according to Isaiah 28, 
This is 28, 10, and 11. That what precept must be upon precept. A, a line here, a little there, a little there. You know? So this, these scriptures is one big puzzle for us to get the mystery to. You know? Alright, so this is, um, what was we at? <clears throat> Verse 6. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ranks. They shall not break their ranks. Neither shall thrust shall one, shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run up the wall. They shall climb upon up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Because this is what the nuclear missiles is going to do. Creeping into it is like a sense of creeping into somebody's city or somebody's home. And it just destroys your whole world right then and there. Just like when the thief entering your home for that can destroy your whole world. Everything could be turned upside down within an instant. And that's what the thermonuclear destruction is here to do. You know? Um, verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. So, and the Lord stated that it would be, what, 200,000 thousand. So what? That's going to cause the, the whatever time of day it, it, it happens. And if it happens directly in the day, it's going to cause the sky to what? be dark and that's cloudy, you know, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it. So that's what's coming to this world in which many people don't know that the thermonuclear missiles is recorded uh, within these scriptures and just the last precept um <clears throat> yeah so like yeah that that was that was the point that was the point but the scriptures do talk about the thermonuclear destruction all right so um you know with that you know i hope the segment was edifying and i'd like to give all praises honor and glory to yahweh bashim yahushai Bashim Kakudash, <clears throat> double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to like out there doing this work of faith and labor of love, truth, and sincerity. Shalom.